Hello, it gives me great pleasure to welcome today Tarek Amin, who is CTO of Rakuten Mobile, a highly innovative mobile network operator in Japan, serving not only consumers, but enterprises using virtualized networks and the very latest in cloud networking technologies. Hello, Tarek. Hi, Ken. Pleasure being right. here. I Good. I thought we might just start off with digital transformation. It is, of course, accelerating very, very fast, not only in Japan, but all around the world. Uh, new ways of working are emerging. Uh, the, the relying on mobile connectivity has never been so important. So how is, what are the biggest technical challenges facing Rakuten Mobile in this environment and how have you overcome them, uh, and all the time keeping that very important quality of service? So, Ken, uh, if you go back to uh, our journey starting from 2018, um, of course, we took an audacious task, a dream to build the world first end to end cloud native network. Uh, I always say it is what it was an idea that you could not just go to a vendor and say, please sell me this. It's an idea that started from the basic principle of building a network that uh, that supports open RAN, a network that is supports a cloud native architecture deployed from large data centers to uh, regional data centers to far edge data centers, a network that uh, uh, embedded into its fabric automation, and most but. Uh, let's not forget about the criticality of uh, having the right platform organization to support this new vision strategy. In Rakuten, uh, our challenges uh, were numerous. One is we have to go uh, prove and validate the stability of this uh, new new architecture, prove the that this platform architecture can deliver on the cost structure, uh, and prove that we could run a network at a high level of quality that Japanese consumers uh, expect in Japan. And, and to be very frank with you, this journey hasn't been easy, but I think it's the right journey. And if you ask me again, would you take, would you take the path that we have taken uh, to, to achieve the results where we are today? I would say absolutely. It's the right thing to do to build on a cloud native architecture, enable um, an, an agile uh, framework of how you deliver services, move away from proprietary hardware implementation to software on everything, software in the fabric of everything we do every day. And for me, most important thing is to just to see how the organization has evolved, developed to support these new principles on managing network, uh, not just the networks of today, but the network of the future. As you said, it, it is a journey. I just wonder whether I could push you to sort of say what are the biggest success stories as far as you are concerned on this journey so far? Well, I mean, I, I, I'll tell you my, my biggest learning is, uh, you know, uh, first of all, um, not putting obstacles in someone's mind to why this cannot work. You know, we never really, and I personally never believed that I need plan B while we were thinking about building such a platform architecture, building this end-to-end -end cloud native network my biggest success story is to see the maturity of the young organization evolving, developing, uh, uh, you know, to, to really see when I walk into my office and I see people writing uh, code to mitigate operational incidents, I could not be any happier. So I, I am really delighted to see um, the maturity of the organization, them realizing that automation is not a one-time event, that now we need to do this every day to deliver on uh, services in a far more agile way um, is, is I think my biggest success is just uh, really around the structure and the organization. And as you move forward, I know that you're working very closely with Cisco and you're building an internet for the future. And I, I believe you just recently announced some sort of collaboration for a 400 gig ready network and it's powered by SRV6 and routed optical networking technologies converging the IP and optical layers. I mean, what kind of advantages do you see that kind of transition uh, present to you as well as other operators who might be going down that path? 
When uh, I decided to select Cisco, today Cisco enjoys being what uh, the exclusive IP transport vendor in Rakuten. I've selected Cisco not because they, they had the best technology, but I will tell you, we culturally aligned to what the future needs to look like. We culturally aligned to the fact that we need to push the envelope and we, don't, we didn't need to put ourselves in the construct of obstacles that might exist in the past. We should just be focused on redefining the networks of the future. And in that uh, early discussion, um, you know, I flew to San Jose to meet with the uh, Cisco uh, leaders and their engineering team to start defining you know, the foundation of what the future rocket and mobile network architecture needs to look like. We both agreed that telco cloud is critical. Delivering on a reliable carrier grade telco cloud is absolutely phenomenally important, but the foundation of the telco cloud must also res rel uh, reside on a highly reliable IP transport fabric that is built not for today, but also for the future. And in that area, we collaborated on defining a fully flat IPv6 network that really had employed in its essence and DNA the principle that we wanted, which is retain simplicity and uh, hyperscale in terms of uh, scalability and automation. And, um, and the fabric that we have deployed in our data centers is also, I think, in Japan and, and probably across the world to deploy 400G fabric data centers uh, enable us to be ready for future use cases on 5G core and enablement of high capacity user plane functions. And most recently, what we announced our collaboration with uh, Cisco is I think is a big breakthrough to really employ and deploy on top of this IPv6 over uh, uh, SRV6 to be deployed on top of our IPv6 network. I think this is also a big, big breakthrough for us. Right, uh, you talked about redefining networks and you've talked about breakthroughs as well. Uh, how does this translate into increased revenues for the enterprise customer? Uh, I mean, is there any uh, use cases that you can tell me about? Absolutely. So, you know, what, one thing that many people don't know today, um, uh, th that Rakuten isn't just a mobile operator. In fact, on the same fabric that we have today, the same flat IP uh, network, we now have converged, our FTTX network is converged in the same platform architecture. So I have a fixed mobile convergence platform architecture. I have my enterprise as well as my consumer's business running on the same architecture. So when you think about what will SRV6 enable uh, in Rocket and Network, it will absolutely create new revenue streams. For me, uh, it, it is about enterprise network services. An example for this is secure VPN services that we'll be launching. Most important for me is also the use cases of what true 5G might look like. True 5G must enable in its essence network slicing. And I think SRP6 on transport layer is really elegant way to offer end-to-end -end network slicing with our open RAN platform and cloud delivered services. When you think about gaming, uh, you know, and, and people want to enable cloud gaming on, on, uh, uh, on the edge, I think we are in uniquely positioned to offer this. Um, second big thing for us, when you think about it also, let's not underestimate operational efficiency. We need enhanced service assurance deliver SLA per slice is also not a trivial business. And I think with this architecture now, we could deliver SLA on a per slice basis and monetize on a slice uh, cost structure that hasn't really happened before. So I'm really enthused and excited. And despite adding all these services, what does not change is my underlying fabric is still retains the essence of what we want, which is retain simplicity. Anything we do must always meet this requirement in, uh, in our platform. And ambitions are not just restricted to Japan, of course. You have strong international goals uh, for expansion. May you just tell us a little bit about the Rakuten communications platform and how that's important for you in taking the message to a wider international audience? 
I think Rocket and Communication Platform has really um, a massive opportunity. I believe it has the ability to transform the way that we deliver uh, cloud services, especially on network functions and applications. Um, you know, I'm I'm really really delighted and happy to see us and Cisco partnering, not just locally in Japan, but as we go abroad. There is a there is a wealth of opportunity for partnership and collaboration to take some of the technology that we have done in Japan, to take the last three years, and the last three years, believe me, they were not easy. The lessons learned in Japan are so valuable, embedded into the fabric of our software that exists in RCP, to bring to the masses, to the world, a new way of how you should build connectivity. We are making amazing progress. I hope in the near future, and very near, near future, uh, us and Cisco could announce something big about taking RCP outside of the boundaries of Japan. Well, I look forward to hearing that announcement and rest assured the industry is looking very closely at what you're up to and it's a very impressive story as well. So thanks very much, Tarek, for speaking to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.